Hello and welcome. Today is Monday, October the 10th, 2016. This is Paul Sandhu. I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, Deutsche Bank and what's going on in the economic realm. Deutsche Bank, of course, has been in the news lately and uh, there have been a lot of people that have been crying that this will spell the end of the system if Deutsche Bank collapses or that the uh, that the derivatives book of Deutsche Bank is so huge that it is going to take the whole system down with it. Uh, you know, I would tend to disagree with that in that whatever is going to happen to Deutsche Bank. Okay, this is something that we've been expecting for a while. Like in my channel, this was reported back, going back even to 2014, that Deutsche Bank is, uh, you know, one to watch that there's going to be when the next Lehman brother comes it is most likely going to be Deutsche Bank okay so is Deutsche Bank going to fail is it going to collapse like Lehman Brothers uh, possibly possibly I would probably think not but the end result of what is going on in my opinion is that all these events are orchestrated and they are orchestrated to actually strengthen the control of the central bankers. There are some people okay, that have come to this conclusion that it is going to be you know the power the financial power in particular is going to shift banking power is going to shift from the West from London New York Switzerland France, Germany, to a lesser extent, Italy, Canada. It's going to shift to China, Russia, to the BRICS nations. I am vehemently opposed to that point of view. It is my strong, strong, strong belief that the same powers, whether human or non-human, or a combination of the two, they are very much in control and they are actually more in control today of all financial, economic, political entities worldwide than ever before in history. People who are waiting for Vladimir Putin to ride in on a white horse and bring freedom and liberty, they are sadly mistaken. Or, uh, you know, Xi of China or such, or somebody from India. Okay, China, India, Russia, they are more controlled by these very same powers that have controlled them for centuries than ever, ever before. Okay, they are more enslaved today than ever before. As a matter of fact, India just signed some agreements with the United States, uh, with the Western powers, let's say, that basically hand over their military, or a lot of their military assets, you know, they lose control of them, so they've essentially given up their sovereignty and this is not just true in the realm of military, it is also true in the realm of uh, finance, banking, economics, where the Western corporations, multinational corporations, basically dictate what happens inside India. And this is also true in China. This is also true in Russia. Again, like I said in one of my previous videos, that if you go down to Beijing or Shanghai, or you go to Moscow or New Delhi, what you see there is Holiday Inns, you see Marriott Hotel, Sheraton's, Radisson's, you know, Best Westerns, all of the Western, mostly United States or Europe based chains that are doing booming business down there. Okay? You see Walmarts, you see, you know, Apple iPhones, you see all these things, even like Samsung, whatever, Japanese made goods, but again, those are also Korea and Japan are basically vassal states of the Western New York, London banking powers. So don't expect Vladimir Putin. Putin is going to do nothing that is going to bring any sort of challenge to the power of the banking elites. It will not happen. That is my strong, strong, strong belief that if there is a charade of opposition between Russia and China, Russia and the United States, or between China and the U.S. As for example, when Obama went down to China for the G20 meeting, and he was apparently snubbed, all that is choreographed drama for your uh, entertainment, essentially. 
the reality is quite different that the same powers that control Obama also control Putin. They also control Xi. They, they control Modi of India. They control everybody. You know, the people that uh, have been saying for a while that the BRICS are going to come and become a challenge to the Western banking powers. No, the BRICS central governance, especially their banks, they are totally controlled by the same boys that control Wall Street, that control the city of London, that control Zurich. It is the same group that control the Vatican. Okay, so let's get that out of the way that Deutsche Bank, whether it fails or not, all that happens is, and these things are being done by design, they are being done to consolidate the power of the bankers. And this leads right to the mark of the beast, financial system as prophesied in Revelation 13, which must come into place where all of the monetary control worldwide is centralized. Okay, and if that is centralized, then you can rest assured that some things must have happened beforehand to bring that control about. And these are the events that are happening. Lehman Brothers, Deutsche Bank, etc. All that will happen is like the government will come in and bail them out. And then they will be bailed out by the central bankers. And all that happens is that those entities, which were once private corporations, such as uh, Deutsche Bank, they will now become absolutely in the control of the central bankers who also control the governments. So Deutsche Bank's failure will not will not collapse the system in my belief that it will be bailed out and it also may be bailed in. And here's an interesting story about bail-ins, okay? This is on zerohedge.com. It says here's where the next next bank deposit bail-in will strike. One shot from a pistol pierced the night before Antonio Baden collapsed dead. Antonio, a 67-year-old retired Italian, had just committed suicide. He was plagued by health problems and by the loss of his savings. Last year, four small Italian banks became insolvent and immediately needed capital. They turned to a bail-in. So this MO, modus operandi of uh, bailing in, which is meaning stealing the depositor's money, their savings. This precedence has been set and it has been repeated a few times already. It is being fine tuned and eventually I think that is what will happen. Whereas the central banks have the power to bail out these banks by just printing the darn money. Okay, the system can be continued indefinitely by, you know, all these shenanigans that go on through QE, through whatever means, you know, like the, right now, these bankers have enough tools in, their, in their, their weapons in their arsenal that they can continue it indefinitely if they want to. But the thing is that they will not want to because they are beholden to greater powers and to them they must answer. And therefore, this bail-in is essentially these problems with Deutsche Bank and other banks which will follow. They serve a purpose. First of all, they give control, more controlling to the Federal Reserve, the ECB, the Bank of Japan, etc., that they become absolute masters of the economy. And at the same time, they will cry wolf and say, oh, no, no, it's a big, bad situation here. So we have to, sorry, we have to take your money. We'll pay it back. You know, we're just going to use it for a little while. We'll take a hundred dollars. We'll pay you back the hundred dollars in like, you know, maybe a hundred days or a hundred months or a hundred years, whatever. But by the time, if and when you do get it back, that hundred dollars will be worth about ten in purchasing power. That's what will happen. So this is the game that is being played. It is to centralize control on a worldwide scale. Okay, There are no independent countries left in the world. None. Not a single one. Whether it's Saudi Arabia or it's uh, you know uh, Russia or Brazil or China or India or the United States or United Kingdom or France or Germany. They are all controlled by an unseen group of people who are in control of some unseen powers that are not human that is how the world is controlled and you can bet your life on it that that is how it is so what does this failure of Deutsche Bank mean 
while it could of course mean great deal of turmoil in the markets which I think is also the plan where uh, you know people have been booming with their stock markets I hear people talking at work about stocks all the time how you know this and that you know they're imagining all these uh, you know luxury retirements uh, down in uh, in the south of France or something like that but the plug will be pulled on the market again and people will lose their savings in that are in the pension funds etc not only that when Deutsche Bank's dominoes start to fall what will follow possibly are more bail-ins on a bigger scale so those people who have a lot of savings in the bank you know they can get ready to kiss them goodbye and all this will happen in my opinion within the next two to three years now we are getting closer to the end game and what will the end game be is it going to be a clash of civilizations is it going to be the west against the east very much like possible it's very possible that there could be some wars but again they are not going to be wars between independent powers they are also going to be wars that are going to be orchestrated just like the second world war was orchestrated or the first world war was orchestrated Okay, so a lot of what lies ahead is a great deal of darkness, not just economically, but also politically, also geographically, that there's going to be much destruction headed our way. That just as prophesied in the Bible, in the book of Matthew, in chapter 24, in the book of Revelation, you may think that those are just fairy tales. They are not, my friend. They are prophecies of the living God, and they will come to pass. Therefore, don't believe those stories that somehow or the other there is a real, uh, real powers that are rising up, opposing powers. No, the Bible tells us there are going to be ten kings, so there will be ten centers of power, no doubt. Okay, right now there's one major one, which is the United States, and then there's the rest of the world. But I believe the power of the United States will be diminished, and the other ones will be raised up, which is what is happening with Russia and China. It is all being done by design and India. So you will have these ten kings, ten powers, but they will be equally beholden to the beast, who is the enemy of our souls. Okay, these guys are not your friends. Putin is not your friend, Obama is not your friend, Xi of China is not your friend, May of England is not your friend, Modi of India is not your friend, Hollande of France is not your friend, and whoever the leader is in your country, wherever you may be, Merkel in Germany, you know, you, they are not your friends, they are the enemies because they work for the enemy. So let's forget about this uh, hoopla about Deutsche Bank and look at the bigger picture that this is exactly what is coming is that control that was prophesied a long time ago the centralization of power th through the control of the monetary system and of course it's whoever has the gold the golden rule is whoever has the gold is the one that calls the shots okay so as these bankers become more and more power becomes more and more centralized more and more control of political systems and governments is also going to be centralized that one world government which is also going to become is very much in development and these are all the things that are happening that are leading up to that okay this is why the UN etc is always you know pushed front and foremost as if the UN is going to be the savior of the world no they're not no, they are not. The people that run the UN, they are very wicked and evil and uh, they are the same people that run Washington, that run London, that run, uh, you know, whatever country that you live in. It is all being run by the same powers. That is what is going on. So uh, that is my take on it, that these things are being done by design, that uh, nothing is happening uh, by accident, nothing is happening uh, you know organically no all of these are very much by design and uh, and therefore what can you do I don't know really what to tell you you know you can have some precious metals you know gold and silver maybe they might help at least for a while and or the best thing would be to have like some kind of you know uh, self-sustenance means like a piece of land which can produce some food have some water you know, has some means of generating some energy, etc. But uh, other than that, 
What is really necessary is for you to understand who you are, where you came from, who it is that gives you life, and who it is that can sustain life, which is God. Okay, If you don't know him, and if you don't understand who he is, then really there is no hope. That's my take on life. Thank you for listening. This is Paul Sindhu. Rejoicing, for life without Him would be filled with despair. The blackness of sin would be ever upon us. No way to escape if He had not came. Existence and life would go hopelessly on. This is also true in China. This is also true in Russia. Again, like I said in one of my previous videos, that if you go down to Beijing or Shanghai, or you go to Moscow or New Delhi, what you see there is Holiday Inns. You see Marriott Hotels, Sheratons, Radisons, you know, Best Westerns. All of the Western, mostly United States or Europe-based chains that are doing booming business down there. Okay, you see Walmart, you see, you know, Apple iPhones, you see all these things, even like Samsung, whatever, Japanese made goods. But again, those are also Korea and Japan are basically vassal states of the Western New York, London banking powers. So don't expect Vladimir Putin. Putin is going to do nothing that is going to bring any sort of challenge to the power of the banking elites. It will not happen. That is my strong, strong, strong belief that if there is a charade of opposition between Russia and China, Russia and... Hello and welcome. Today is Monday, October the 10th, 2016. This is Paul Sandhu. 
I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, Deutsche Bank and what's going on in the economic realm. Deutsche Bank, of course, has been in the news lately, and uh, there have been a lot of people that have been crying that this will spell the end of the system if Deutsche Bank collapses, or that the that the derivatives book of Deutsche Bank is so huge that it is going to take the whole system down with it. Uh, you know, I would tend to disagree with that in that whatever is going to happen to Deutsche Bank. Okay, this is something that we've been expecting for a while. Like in my channel, this was reported back, going back even to 2014, that Deutsche Bank is, uh, you know, one to watch that there's going to be, when the next Lehman brother comes, it is most likely going to be Deutsche Bank. Okay, so is Deutsche Bank going to fail? Is it going to collapse like Lehman Brothers? Uh, the United States or between China and the U.S. As for example, when Obama went down to China for the G20 meeting and he was apparently snubbed, all that is choreographed drama for your uh, entertainment, essentially. The reality is quite different that the same powers that control Obama also control Putin. They also control Xi. They, they control Modi of India. They control everybody. You know, the people that uh, have been saying for a while that the BRICS are going to come and become a challenge to the Western banking powers. No, the BRICS central governance, especially their banks, they are totally controlled by the same boys that control Wall Street, that control the city of London, that control Zurich. It is the same group that control the Vatican. Okay, so let's get that out of the way that Deutsche Bank, whether it fails or not, all that happens is, and these things are being done by design, they are being done to consolidate the power of the bankers. And this leads right to the mark of the beast, financial system as prophesied in Revelation 13, which must come into place where all of the monetary control Possibly, possibly, I would probably think not. But the end result of what is going on, in my opinion, is that all these events are orchestrated and they are orchestrated to actually strengthen the control of the central bankers. There are some people, okay, that have come to this conclusion that it is going to be, you know, the power, the financial power in particular is going to shift. Banking power is going to shift from the West, from London, New York, Switzerland, France, Germany, to a lesser extent, Italy, Canada. It's going to shift to China, Russia, to the BRICS nations. I am vehemently opposed to that point of view. It is my strong, strong, strong belief that the same powers, whether human or non-human, or a combination of the two, they are very much in control and they are actually more in control today of all financial, economic, political entities worldwide than ever before in history. People who are waiting for Vladimir Putin to ride in on a white horse and bring freedom and liberty, they are sadly mistaken, or uh, you know, Xi of China or such, or somebody from India, okay? China, India, Russia, they are more controlled by these very same powers that have controlled them for centuries than ever, ever before. Okay, they are more enslaved today than ever before. As a matter of fact, India just signed some agreements with the United States uh, with the Western powers, let's say, that basically hand over their military or a lot of their military assets in the loose control of them, so they would essentially given up their sovereignty. And this is not just true in the realm of military, it is also true in the realm of uh, finance, banking, economics, where the Western corporations, multinational corporations, basically dictate what happens inside India 